So welcome to the Choose 80 Zoom room. It's really lovely to see you both. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It is such a sunny feeling, your music, when we see you at the festivals. We think that's why it goes down so well. And especially we close our eyes. It's got special memories for both of us growing up. Um, and it was recently your 35th anniversary of that song, well, two years ago. <laughs> You've had to put yeah. your, your <laughs> tour on delay because of COVID. Yeah. But yay, you can do it now. And yay! You're performing <laughs> yes. the Symphonia Orchestra, aren't you? Um, how did that come about? Our manager suggested it, basically. I mean, it, it, it's it's kind of, we, you know, you do find lots of people sort of following trends and there's been a trend for people going out with an orchestra um, or taking an orchestra out on the road. And um, we, we've got loads of gigs this year. We've got like 50 gigs, but only four of them are with the orchestra yeah. as we speak because logistically, you know, it's difficult. There's an extra 29 people in the band <laughs> than there normally yeah. is. So we're playing, um, well, the, what was the 16th, I think we're playing in... Um, Southcliffe Pavilion. Thank you. The, the 18th South. is Manchester Bridgewater Hall. The 19th is Birmingham Symphony Hall. And on Richard's birthday on the 20th of March, oh, yes. we're oh. playing at the Palladium in London. Yes, everybody. Oh, yeah. Come to the Palladium Come to on Richard's my birthday. Yes. Come to Richard's birthday party, and I, I guarantee I'll, I'll accept any gift. I wonder if the orchestra will play on <laughs> birthday. I don't think they're going to be that spontaneous. Oh, you might have to arrange that. Oh, yeah, you can have <laughs> I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Is it very different oh. playing with, a, with an orchestra? How do you rehearse? Do you get together to that's rehearse? A, that's, that's a good question. Yes, you do get together to rehearse. You get together to rehearse on the day before the first show. Uh, yes. So it's, oh. uh, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a that different much preparation. scenario. It's a different scenario with orchestral players than it is with electric pop players, if you like. Um, we are led to believe orchestral players, they're going to be playing the dots that are on the paper in front of them on the night. So it's not a situation where they would where you would rehearse with an orchestra for days after days you know it's uh, uh yeah. we'll, they'll they'll run Cost through, too much money that's, that's true <laughs> so they'll, yeah. they'll run through, yeah. <laughs> they'll run through the arrangements that they're going to play the day before the south end uh just to make sure that there aren't any impending disasters and then yes it happens for real the following day yeah we got great people yeah. though. i mean the, the guy that uh, rob taggart has done the arrangements sort of been quite weird doing arrangements with somebody down the phone and I've sat so much yeah. sitting at my kitchen table as I am now with a little keyboard <laughs> in front of me going, no, this, Rob, this, this, like this, you know. <laughs> but uh, he's he's a he's a real find. It's been, it's been, it's quite emotional, actually. I mean, some of the tracks, especially the slower tracks, he's brought a real mm. poignancy to them, which which is actually quite difficult for your, your own song to touch yourself, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. A, couple, a couple of times... When I hear the things he's done, it's, it's yeah, it's it's, it's got oh, to me. That's fantastic. Because we close our eyes. That I mean, that's over thirty-five years now. Um, but you've actually been together since nineteen eighty-two, haven't you? So that's forty years this well, year. Well, before that, I mean, I've known Pete since I was really? sixteen, which is a while back now. Wow. So. How did you both meet? Were you, did you meet at school then, or? No, we were living locally, but we didn't go to the same school. We were both influenced by a band you probably won't remember, called Free. Um, All Right oh, Now was our yeah. their oh, biggest yes. single. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that was the band that we both enjoyed when we were in our teenage years. And our little pub bands, if you like, were playing that kind of song, those kinds of songs, or songs by Free. And I read a review yeah. of Rich's band in the local newspaper. I went along to see them rehearse, and that's when we met. And he asked oh. me for... My band's demo cassette. I suppose you probably can't remember cassettes either, can you? But yes, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So use a pencil. <laughs> yes, gaslighting when it meant something different. Yeah, so uh, I, yes, so I, I handed over the demo, and that was the beginning of the friendship. And here we are. Oh, I, had, I took the tape home. I took the tape home. I put it on. I thought if I can get this singer to be in the band with me, I'll do all right. So, so yeah. I mean, you must be like a married couple now, you know. I mean, are there any? Yeah, happy yeah without the good bits. About each other? <laughs> yeah. We've learned. We've learned. It's been a long, been a long, unconsummated marriage, um, and uh, yeah, we've uh, we've learned to. Uh, we had a gap, you know, after after the end of the summer album, we we, we went yeah. our own way, separate ways for yeah. about seven years, and 
I had a family and Pete had a fantastic time in LA. Um, yeah. we, 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 can see, we can see the asteroids coming these days and we avoid them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what have been the highlights of your time together, if you could pick a couple out? I've only been on a stage accepting an award on one occasion, so that's got to be one of the highlights. We won the Best Newcomer at the BPI Awards oh. now the, in 1986. Yeah. We were actually um, so gonna, was... gonna talk to you about that, Richard, because yeah. okay. tonight is yeah, the yeah. Brits. I was saying earlier on, my son actually is in the music business and um, he was up seeing his sister in Scotland, came back and said, Dad, can I borrow your tie? I'm going to the Brits tonight. So I'm wow. like, oh, oh. I've got a couple of artists up for awards, so yeah. Brilliant. But going back all those yeah. years, we had a look on, on YouTube but you receiving it which I would have been very, very young and very excited, you know, newcomers. What was it like on the night? What was the gossip? You know, obviously, our label knew the result in advance, and they asked us, uh, did we want to know? And we said, no, no, we don't want to know. We didn't, honestly. Because we think... thought we were going to lose, so we thought, let's, let's dream a little longer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, yeah. we didn't honestly think we had much chance of winning. Uh, and then we did win, which was obviously great, and we went up and very clumsily accepted the awards um, and the press uh, afterwards said, well, it's obvious that Go West knew that they had won. And I don't know how they could possibly have said that because if we had known that we were going to win, we would have remembered drunk so much before we went we out. Rem- <laughs> we, would have remembered to, we would have remembered to thank all the many people in the background that helped us get there. But of course we didn't do that because it was very spare at the moment and we were just, oh my God, we won, which yeah. is great. Yeah. I thought that Aha were going to win, and of course they did. They were much more successful than we were. I thought, well, it's going to be Aha, isn't it? So yes, I will have another one. Thank you. Um, and then, <laughs> of, of course, Aha can't win a Brit, can they? Because they're not <laughs> pretty. <laughs> so no, I, I, it's a schoolboy error there from me. But uh, no, it's amazing. When, honestly, when they said the name, I was just like, I could not believe it. I, I just, I, I messed Pete's hair up, which was, that's coming, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're just about to go out with, to, to 100 million people. Let's yeah. mess your hair up. Come on. <laughs> anyway. so who else was there on the night? Did you mix with other 80s acts while you were there? I think, as Richard says, we're too drunk to remember. <laughs> Huey, yeah, Huey no. Lewis in the News was there. I can definitely remember that much. Oh, Phil Collins was there. Oh, yeah, oh was, brilliant. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was, a bit surreal, you know, being in because we I got bet. interviewed with him, and and then he's a guy that I've, you know, seen many times in Genesis. I've gone to see him in his other band, Brand X, and all of a sudden oh, wow. he's standing, yeah. next to you, he's standing next to you talking about, you know, the yeah. music. I mean, <laughs> one of your, you know, big hits was King of Wishful Thinking, and uh, obviously the film Pretty Woman was uh, fantastic. You know, one of my top top films of all time. So when we hear that, it's so good to hear that song, which sold 10 million copies, didn't it, worldwide? It um, did, it did, and more actually, it still, still, still keeps selling. I wasn't keen to get involved in that film. I mean, fortunately, I was talked down by Peter and, and Ron, the R A and R man. But uh, when you get involved in a film, we'd already done, uh, already been involved with Rocky Four, and then we're involved with Nightmare on Elm Street 28 or whatever it was. And um, <laughs> I, what what then happens is you get you then get onto the bandwagon of the film, and you and you forget yeah. about the Go West record. Yeah. But fortunately, you know, it swings and roundabouts. I mean, the album. Our album did okay, but uh, but but having yeah. that song and that Pretty Woman soundtrack uh, just blew the doors off for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, and did you actually get to meet Julia Roberts? We yeah, did. We outside her apartment in the bushes for three weeks. <laughs> finally got to meet her, didn't we? <laughs> we did meet Julia when she was together with uh, Keeper Sutherland. And uh, All right. yeah, it was, a, it was a very brief meeting. Uh, so we had a quick chat and she obviously knew that we had a film a song on the soundtrack of the film uh, yeah. but it was a brief conversation because Kiefer came up and claimed his prize quite quickly and dragged her off before either oh. of us could make a fool of ourselves yes yeah. <laughs> oh that's a shame that's a shame actually I, I, I've got a guilty secret here when I lived in Los Angeles and we were all driving around in, in you know open top cars um 
I was on my own at the time and I, and, and I saw this, you know, uh, this lovely lady driving a, an open top Beetle and I kind of, she was going the same way as me, I actually pulled up out of the, what was that restaurant I'm sitting C- CAA called? Uh, anyway, it was a restaurant that I was going to, and she got out yeah. of the car, and I got out of the car, and I thought well, I might try and strike up a conversation. And she turned around, and it was Julia Roberts. No. Like, oh wow! Oh. Of all the chances, you know, you, you bump. I into- know, I know, but it's like it. It's like it's like it there. I mean, you get invited. Yeah. I got invited to a party one night, and again, she was there, uh, yeah. and, and uh, Diane Keaton was there, and oh, it's wow. just yeah. a real place to live. You know, you yeah. can get, you yeah. go down, you go oh, down yeah. to. You go down to their Tesco's and, and, and there's, you know, um, Cuba Gooding Jr. buying yeah, themselves some celery. Absolutely. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're, they are all, after all, just people going about their, yeah. their lives. So, you know, I can remember exactly. sitting, in, sitting in a restaurant at the counter on my own, eating pasta, and an actress called Madeline Stowe. I'm not sure if you know who that oh, is, but yes. I, yeah. I had just seen, I'd just seen her in a film. I'd just seen Madeline Stowe. 30 yeah. feet high on the screen. And she wasn't that tall when she that. wasn't that tall. Uh, no, but there she was, <laughs> sitting with her husband, Brian Benman, who was very successful at the time, big name. And they were sitting yeah. there in the restaurant. And of course, I just couldn't help myself. I just wanted to have another so quick, <laughs> quick check to see if it was in fact Madeline Stowe. And when, <laughs> unfortunately for me, when I turned around, she was staring right at me as if to say, Leave us alone. We're just having a private day. <laughs> yeah, if you were thinking of coming over, he he was he. You could see in his face that he was much more sympathetic to my situation. But Madeline was yeah. not not particularly enamoured of being stared at in a restaurant. You know? No, well, just stay indoors, shouldn't she? Really, just stay indoors. So that's it. She no should have done. Look at you. <laughs> Did you ever get offered any acting or cameo role opportunities over there? Because yeah. You know, I, I, I did. I got offered. Well, there's a the, the, uh, Melanie Green is a, a friend of ours that's over there, and she used to rep. Well, she probably still does represent David Duchovny, and she also oh, uh, right. represented David Cassidy. And she phoned me up one day because I I was in reasonably good shape at that time. She said, um, "Do you want to come and be in a share video?" And I said, oh. "No, no one wants me in a share video." And she said, "Yeah, they need they need they need a, somebody to play a certain part." And I said, "What's what's the name of the character?" And they went the body and I went no I'm not going to come along I can't. and if you remember it was, I think it was if I could turn back time it's the one on the boat uh, and there's a, say, was oh, it, yes. a sailor there was a guy there with long hair and big muscles that could oh. have been me if I'd have, oh. I'd have said yeah but, oh that's um, a shame Richard oh. Oh, I don't know really it would be a bit weird wouldn't it so what's the guy I go rest too in this video you know <laughs> So uh, yeah, but we we've passed on some fantastic things. Passed on a Bond theme, didn't we? That was that was a good idea. Well, <laughs> well, we passed on really? something for a Bond. Theme. Yes, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Can I just go back to um, you mentioned Rocky Four. That's another yeah. of my top ten films. Um, how did that come about? And was it true that you were supposed to do Heart on Fire to start, which was like the training yes, that, montage? Yes, that's right. We. Uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, announced himself from afar as a fan, which was really nice. That he, was, yeah. He heard something that we had done, and and he it was. We were both really impressed by the fact that he was involved in every element of the film he was making. So much so that not only was it personal invitation to be involved in the soundtrack, but he came down to the studio to wish oh, us well. Eventually, uh, eventually. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, uh, we we were um, also asked to record a song called Hearts on Fire, which was ultimately recorded by another artist. And I have to take some responsibility for the fact that our version didn't make the album because I wasn't really a big fan of the song. And I suppose it, oh. was, in, it was in 15 seconds of my life when I felt confident enough yes. to say, I'm not sure I really want to do this. But we did record the song, and I did sing it through clenched teeth. But you can hear it. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, that's and, it. I, and I've been with yeah. Pete a long time, as you as you know. And I will say, look, there's no point in getting him to try and do this if he doesn't want no. to do it because it won't that's sound. That's it. Your heart. Right. You know, your yeah, heart's you got to be in it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to have the joy, don't you? You know, you have to have, yeah. have the joy in, in the song. And uh, so, yeah, we went through recording that. Fortunately, we had the fallback position of a song called One Way Street, which yeah. somehow slides Stallone had heard as a demo and, and and so 
he was kind enough to say, okay, you're not having the one where he always runs up something, doesn't he? And then goes, oh, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And um, uh, on this occasion, that was going to be us, but we ended up being um, coming out of a robot for 13 seconds. But even, oh, then, right. even then, Stallone, God bless him, in the film, actually went, oh, nice tune. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. That's prestige, boy. I love it. I love, love it. He was so, yeah. I should like to say something. I mean, we had to wait for him to come down. And literally, you know, the first day in the studio was sitting, waiting for him, and he didn't come. So he's a busy boy. But when he did yeah. come, he was yeah. so gracious. He was so nice to us. And he's a smart oh. cookie. I mean, everyone knows that. But everyone used to yeah. always go, true legend. Alone, but yeah. he's one smart cookie. He is. Oh, oh he's a legend, yeah. One of your yeah. other highlights that we've seen is when you played the baseball stadium and you played alongside... Um, Style Council, Culture Club, and the Associates. Yeah. What was that yeah. like? What What was that experience well, that was, like? That was our, more or less, our first live outing, um, our first live show. So oh. particularly for Richard, it was a bit of a baptism of fire because we, having done... I've only done school gigs. Really small that. shows. Oh, right. And then, as you say, yeah. we find ourselves on a bill in Japan with Culture Club and the Style Council and the Associates and... Uh, I remember one of the earlier shows, it was a, all of the gigs were vast because of Culture Club's draw. We were lower down on the bill. But um, they have a draw? it was very humid uh, in Japan and we had oxygen at the side of the stage. Really? In case, in case you needed oxygen during the performance. Or in case Michael Jackson wanted to come up. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's no, Paul Weller like? like? I've always been been a fan of Paul Weller and what was it like to to work alongside him? Well um, the only story I can tell you about Paul Weller because I didn't knock about with Paul that much and I, I'm not sure how enamored he was with Go West but still Richard might say <laughs> something different but well um, I have got a Paul story our, but I'll our, tell you our, okay. guitarist, our guitarist having been to Japan many times previously has said to us if you can learn a little bit of Japanese and say it on stage. They love yeah. the fact my hair is on fire. That, that um. They love the fact that you will try, <laughs> unlike French people when you go to France. But anyway. Oh no, they don't yeah. like it, do they? No, that's right. No, they that's pretend right. they can't understand you. Yeah. So I so yeah. I went to, so I went to great lengths to to uh, phonetically learn a little phrase to say on stage. And yeah. when the moment came I did my little bit and the crowd were very kind. And then we finished yeah. our set and the Style Council came on and they played one song and clearly the audience reaction was not quite as Paul would have liked it. So unlike me, Paul shouted into the microphone, clap you! <laughs> you can put the word in yourself. <laughs> and, so it, and, it, and, it was that, and it was that word but, as well. And we went, oh! Um, oh, right. Went so punch. it didn't go down quite as well as uh, Go well, West. I don't, I, no, I don't think, think anyone well. understood. I think no. the people that were shocked were the English-speaking people who went, he didn't just say that. He didn't just... <laughs> but I, I, I had... Um, I, I tried to tell this story briefly, but I had a fantastic um, uh, thing happen when there was a girl that lived in Los Angeles. She used to cut... It sounds a bit show busy, but uh, Lucy, good old London girl. And, um, but she was over in LA cutting hair. And, and when once I moved back... Um, I didn't, I, don't, I thought, well, where am I going to get my hair cut? And uh, yeah. I phoned Lucy and she was in London. I said, Lucy, you're in London. you got to come here. We've got to the pubs or whatever it is. <laughs> she said, Rich, I can't, I can't. I'm up to my ears. And anyway, yeah. she phoned me back. She said, look, if you can be opposite Barnes Pond at this house um, at seven o'clock tomorrow night, I'll do it. And so I turned up, didn't know. Barnes where, Pond, that's a weird place to get your hair cut. I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> and it, it, it turned out, I, it turned out to be, the uh, keyboard player, the girl keyboard player in Paul's band. And I walked oh. in to the kitchen and Paul was sitting down with his hair cut. <laughs> so oh, really? I sat down opposite him while he had his hair cut and we talked. And then I, and he, he was kind enough to stay to see me have my hair cut. But, but the, the one, the one uh, well, there were a lot of nice things in that conversation, but he turned me on to uh, Nick Drake. I don't know if you know the artist Nick yeah. Drake. Yeah. Oh, but yes, uh, yes. I, 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 you know, he, he, he's, uh, I, he's grateful. I mean, you know, I, I, yeah. even that thing with the crowd. I mean, wow. it's just what you see is what you get. You know, yeah. he's got no yeah, defense. Right. Yeah. You know. 
great musician and performer as well, isn't he? Yes, yeah. he's a lovely guy. Sorry. You know, it's, it, the thing is, people think that, you know, because you go up and you can stand like the Oklahoma baseball stadium, you can stand up in front of 30,000 people and do all this, that you're going to be walk into a room and, you know, just be Mr. Chatty. And he's not, you know, and he doesn't necessarily no. want to to everyone he meets, you know. Yes, so, it's uh, quite so, understated, uh, yeah. Yeah, he is. He's very modest. Yeah. And, um, but on the other hand, he also knows who he is. Yeah. You know, which is, yeah, yeah. So finally, if we can move <laughs> over to another, Paul, um, because you're touring also with Paul Young, aren't you? You've got quite a yeah, few dates second half up. of May. That's right. Second half of May, we're doing a double headline tour with Paul, uh, various venues around the country. So, yeah. Nice venues as well. I mean... You know, there's like the Liverpool Philharmonic and 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 also the Sage uh, in Gateshead. Yeah. All gigs that we oh, really great. love. Oh, brilliant! It's great though because we've done this so long now. It's like I even though I'm going to go and have dinner <laughs> that <laughs> night, you know. Yeah. It is. It's like right that though. You go. I was saying that hotel. We we'll go yeah. to that restaurant. Yeah. And the same happened yeah. in America, you know. Uh, and and we've done the same in Australia. We're so lucky, you know, to 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 oh. obviously we put obviously we put the work in and whatever, but it's yeah. just great to to have been able to do what we do and to be able to go yeah. back to Australia. We used to go to Australia okay. every other year, you know. Oh, wow. And and you go, oh, we're in Adelaide, let's go to, you know, that restaurant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, well, well, life, life's coming again. back a bit now. We do, do other things apart from eating, by the way. <laughs> so we're not talking about restaurants. It's high on the list. Well that's I, it, Adelaide. good. Uh, <laughs> with Paul Young I, I mean did you know Paul very well back in the 80s or have you sort of got to know him better over the years you know since then I think it's true to say we've got to know a number of our 80s contemporaries more recently really because yeah. you know I can we're remember we're all in the same lifeboat <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I, I can remember in the day you know when we did radio interviews people would call in and oh we have Jane from Southampton wants to speak to you. And Jane would say, do you know John Taylor? And I was like, I would always say, why would I know John Taylor? It's not like there's a 80s think... pop star pub where we all go. I do yeah. know John Taylor, by the way. Oh, did you? Sorry to be. <laughs> um, just to yeah. say, good luck with all the touring. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck with all the touring this year. It's been Thank really, really lovely to talk oh, to good you. Good luck. The Palladium on my birthday, the 20th oh, of March. That's what we oh, want we'd to love to. If anyone, if anyone does want to get hold of these tickets, go west dot org dot uk go west right. dot uk for all your go west um paraphernalia with thanks. Right, thanks guys uh, thanks, thanks, thanks peter bye, bye. 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 appreciate it